So for today's episode, I am very pleased to introduce everyone to my good friend, Lawrence James, a.k.a. the number one morning motivator in the world today. So Lawrence, welcome to the 3% podcast. Yes, champ. (laughs) Let's go, champ. (laughs) So Mr. Morning Motivator. Yeah. For all the viewers and people watching, can you tell me where that come from and what does it mean? So the morning motivator basically came from me getting up in the morning and being motivated when everyone else is asleep. Um, and fucking hell, my mind's gone. <laughs> <laughs> can we rerun that? No, let's keep going. That's the first time <laughs> I've fucking ever seen it in the whole time I've known I was just thinking, I was thinking <laughs> why am I actually thinking about what I'm talking about for the first time in my life? I'm actually thinking about what I'm saying. Usually I don't. Yeah. So, yeah. Basically, that's where it came from. Well, let's get back to being the Lawrence of Wino. Let's just yeah. put it out here and speak <laughs> I out I don't thinking. know what happened then. Sorry, people. So, Mr. Morning Motivator. Yeah. Obviously, morning routines, your, your thing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Where did it come from? Um, I've just I've just always been active in the morning. I'm one of them people that don't need much sleep. I've always been excited. I've always looked forward to getting up. I have always been... I'd like to say a morning person, but I'm all day. Like, you can catch me. I'm one of them people that you could wake up at three o'clock in the morning and I'm springing out of bed like, yeah, what's going on? Mm. What's happening? What are we up to? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I've, I've always I've always had that energy about me, no matter what situation I've been in. Um, I've always had like that get up and go. Um, so, yeah. The morning motivator. But at the same time, you're only human. It's not like, you know, the energy's big. Yeah. Obviously, one of the first things that ever attracted me to you. Yeah. Obviously, the energy and, and, and you know, you're so, you are so positive and like, nice to be around. Yeah. But it's not Thank like, you. it's not like 24-7, 365, is no. it? I've, I've obviously, f- apart from being friends, I follow your social media and stuff. And yeah. I think lately, some of the stuff you spoke about is how you maybe haven't been where you normally are. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, yeah, and and do you know what? It's I think it's only since I've been doing a lot of self work that I've never I've never tried to work out what these feelings are. If that makes sense, understand I've, them. You mean? Yeah, I've always like in the past. I've always been like, oh, is what it is. Get on with it and crack on. But as I've got older children um and worked out who i am as a person i've started to delve deeper into why i feel the way that i feel and especially at the fact that i'm trying to put out a message to people to whereby you know i'm trying to motivate people i do not want to be the number one bullshitter can we swear on here yeah sweet I don't want to be the number one bullshitter so i don't want to be this person that's blagging people I feel like this, I feel like that, because I'll be honest with you, 80% of the time, maybe even 95, I do feel great and I feel, you know, there'll be little mishaps here and there, but I do feel great. But um, but yeah, with within delving deep into himself, I've been working out that, hold on, I do have these down days and, and kind of, what are they? Speaking to yourself, brain man, Brian, um, and doing a lot of self-work, I'm, I'm now starting to work out a little bit, accepting it, and then speaking about it, because that's what it's about, right? That's what it's life's about. It's relatable, isn't it? People yeah, it's like, about... You know, we use social media, don't we, as a platform yeah. to spread positivity, but at the same time, it, it's also important to express to people, everyone's life's not all sunshine and rainbows every no. single day, no. all year round. So I think that it, it's important, because obviously I know that, you know, maybe last year it was massive energy, and but yeah, yeah. And since then, you, obviously you've had uh, another baby, which means less sleep. Yeah, another massive commitment in your life, and yeah. it's like it, it, it's hard, isn't it, at times? Yeah, it's 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 very hard. It's it's very tough, and and I'm the first to admit it. Um, I have been finding it a little bit tough this year, just because I can work off no sleep, but then it's the fact of broken sleep, right? So the the quality of sleep that I was getting when I wasn't sleeping much, that was all I needed. Everyone can work off different amounts of sleep, mm-hmm. right? Um, but yeah, it's the it's the broken sleep now. And then on top of that, um 
you know, we've we've got our own thing going on. I've got my little stuff. girl who lives in a separate house, so the time with her. So I've got all these mixed of things that I need to still be, um, still be there for and still give all that energy to. So I've been, yeah, I've been, I've just been trying to, trying, trying to work it out. And like you said to me today, and well, every, every, well, every time that I phone you, sometimes I'm not giving myself enough credit and that's what we can do as humans. Yeah, we can be hard on ourselves, yes, can't we? Yes, yes, And I've realised that, uh, you said to me the other day, because um, I said, mate, I, you know, I feel like I've got this cloud over me, um, blah, and, and you know, I don't feel like I'm, I'm doing enough. And you went, all right, well, make sure you're doing this, this, and this. And I said, mate, I'm doing that before half four in the morning. You started laughing down the phone at me and said, brother, you're doing more than what people do in a week. By by six AM. <laughs> by yeah, by six AM. Yeah. And and you were like, stop like, slow down, mm. switch your phone off for a day, have a day with your family, reset, come away from the world and like And go again. Yeah, and go again. And do you know what? Like that's that that's a message to anyone out there who's slowly letting life get on top of them. Reset. Take a take a break away from social media and just and just reset because um because trying to juggle too much can. You you've only it doesn't matter who you are, you've no. only got so much energy, haven't you? Yeah. And it it, it, it can catch up, catch up on you. And I think it's important because obviously you hear a lot of these motivational speakers and stuff, obviously we're into motivational content and, yeah. and it's useful to us. I watch videos every day. We send yeah. each other videos, but at the same time, it's also important to understand it can't be all go, go, go. Sometimes for the likes of yourself and for yeah. me, the, dis the discipline is to stop and have a rest and not not take on too much or be doing. And I feel like too much. within you saying that, that has actually made me think that there's a gap there where maybe motivational speakers need to, need to speak more about this. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because... It's great jumping on watching ET, you, you know, you, you, you know, all these high flyers, your Les Browns, your, you know, Gary all these Bean. great motivational speakers, and you're like, you know, ET saying he, he, he don't sleep, he's going ham, he's going this, he's going, he's doing it for his daughter, he's doing it for his wife, and you know, gives me goosebumps. Like it's great, but at the same time, what goes up must come down, baby, and when it comes down, yeah, it can be difficult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a testament to you, the fact that obviously with you having so much stuff going on, this just being open on, obviously on camera, on a podcast. Yeah, I feel you're emotional. just speaking real anyway, yeah. But at the same time, it's a testament to yourself to obviously to, to carry that motivation through. Consistency is your fucking middle name because... Can like, we get some tissues on here? <laughs> Can we get some tissues? Because I knew, I knew just where I'm at at the minute. Yeah. But like Lawrence is a really, really close friend of mine and this, this is genuinely just an overdue... Um, catch up and probably one of the most open and honest podcasts I think people are ever going to uh, get to witness really but um, no you're going through a lot aren't you to be honest but as I say consistency like you know, he's my friend and, and we're speaking we help each other and he sends me every it must be what how many months now have you sent me a voice note at what time well, Four, four o'clock yeah, in yeah. the morning some days. Four half, well, at one point I was doing it at three o'clock. <laughs> when, when, so, when I had to train, when I had to train people at, um, yeah, when I had to train people even earlier, mm. I, I was, yeah, I was. But look, was, I'm going to be dead honest. This this wasn't how the podcast went. I've got a list of questions there, but for me, this is, I, I'm actually witnessing and seeing how much work you're putting in. And I wanted to get you on early stages because I, I want people to see Part one, where you are now, in 12 months time, 18 months time, part two is going to be a completely different podcast. Yeah. And and it's going to be massively inspirational to people. You're massively inspirational to me. Do you know what I mean? For me to get, you know, I'm like, fucking I'm the king of mornings and I get up at this time and that time. But for me to know that you've got to start work at half five, so you get up at half three to get your morning routine in before you go off to work to provide for your family. You know, it's like, that's absolutely next level. And to send me the voice notes, what you send me every morning, motivating and inspiring me. 
I'm going to take this opportunity on camera now to say thank you because, honest to God, I'm so blessed to have people like you close to me helping. Help. It's not just me helping other people. It's like I've got amazing people around me who I'm grateful for every single day and you're, you're like right up there with, with the best of them. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, thank you. I know we're not meant to stand up. I know that. know what? Sometimes but let's get back me. to the podcast look let's go because you'll have me an emotional wreck here so the mornings it's, obviously you've seen an, a, a gap in the market you, you're strong routine consistency discipline yeah these are the things you are these are you know I have to say I, I preach what I practice and I wouldn't be comfortable sitting here or doing the videos or the do if these weren't things which were a part of my day to day life yeah so all these things basically what you're putting out there through the social media you're building your profile aren't you yeah because obviously there's an app and stuff coming out now, um, which is basically to help people be more consistent with the morning, to be yeah. more motivated, inspired, to do things what they, what you know, what we all need to do, basically to give us the foundations to have a good day, yeah, to have a positive day, yeah, to be happy, yeah, to be healthy. So do you want to talk a little bit more about obviously your idea and where you're going with that? Yeah. So so basically, morning mindset for me is for. It can be for a multimillionaire or from someone who's, you know, on their own with with three kids, um, even more so for them. The fact that you can, because it's prompted to get up a little bit earlier, right? So for me, you know, even if it's 30 minutes, an hour, whatever you time that you can push yourself to get up to in the morning to whereby the house is quiet, you can either focus on just getting a coffee, writing down this little business idea and spending a little hour a day on it and visualizing it, or you're getting up and you're exercising and you, um, yoga I was going to say then, but we've been, having, <laughs> we, we've been having a bit of drama. Well, not drama, but we have been having a, a proper Viking stand up over yoga and exercise. But anyway, we won't get into that now, but you know, or doing a little bit of yoga or, just something in the morning to to better you as a person. Because for me, the world is crazy right now. It's busy. The first thing that we do when, when, when we get up in the morning is pick up a phone, start scrolling through Instagram. There's trauma. There's, you know, there's some great fucking, things, but yeah. then there's some bad <clears throat> news. And then there's, there's all sorts and, you know, so for me... I think the main thing, though, people are actually oblivious to the fact that they're doing it. Yeah. So the first thing they're doing is getting up in the morning and just consuming a load of negative news fucking wars. Yeah. I won't even go into the stuff, what you're seeing now. The media sells negativity. and Yeah. You know, even like social media and stuff now, a lot of the stuff in the clips, right, you'll just, you know, you'll, you'll find the day. You can't avoid a lot of them. Yeah. Unless you're intentionally... Um, controlling what you're watching and what you but but basically what you're saying is people are picking up the phone aren't they the first thing yeah they do in the morning yeah and giving their attention to a device yeah and that just feeding them information and different things which in general it doesn't it doesn't save us does it there's no, no. but know. straight straight away you, your brain is going to going into react rather than respond so for me this is about getting up okay you will pick your phone up to 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 start, you know, um, the, the app. But, it, you know, it's 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 basically about giving yourself the best start to the day that you can. Forget all the dramas from yesterday. Don't worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. Right now. That's all we've got, right? Right mm. now. So take control before anything else takes control of you. Take control right now. And for, for me... Like if you can get yourself in a, in an amazing like mindset before you wake your child up, how many people? And I'm talking to all yous. How many of yous get up thirty minutes or whatever before you need to take your kids to school? Yeah, and then you're rushing your kids, and then your kids walking into the playground all rushing, and you go, "Oh, I don't know what's up with him, or I don't know what's up with her today." I'll tell you what's up you've woke them up in that mindset. And you know, when people hear that, they'll be like, and I'm not getting on no one's case because we all live busy lives, human, but yeah. it's because we allow, we allow life to, to take over us rather than take control of our lives. You said right? it before, people wake up and they're going straight into reactive mode. Yes, aren't they? 
And it's like, I, it, this is all about taking control of your morning. So you control how your child wakes up. And isn't, that, isn't that like, that powerful? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you're setting your child's mindset of how they're going to approach the day. I wake my little girl up when she's when she's at mine. I wake her up laughing. I'll come in, I'll come into her, I'll kiss her, I'll 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 tickle her, and then she's up. And then other times she'll come downstairs when I'm in mid meditation and join in with me. Do you know what I mean? But the fact that she's coming downstairs and she's seeing that my dad's not a a, a busy mess. She's seeing peace, tranquility. She's asking me questions then. Then she's making her own breakfast. If you've ever woke your child up and allowed them to make their own breakfast, do you know how much that means to them? Like you're setting the, the precedent for, for your child for life. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And they obviously pass that down to their own kids. Of course they do. So like, this is where I, I say, and I'm telling you right now, this app will change one billion and one lives lives and mornings all over the world every month. And I said to you the other day, that's a profound number. That's a scary number. People don't, people from where we're from, don't speak how we speak. But I said to you, if we change, if I change your life, then you change your kid's life, two kids, right? You change your two kid's life. Then they have two kids each. Then they change. And then before you know it, it's compounding, compounding, compounding. And then over, You're changing every over, generation over to 10 years, mm -hmm. you've like gone from, gone from uh, us being, um, being brought up on council estates and not knowing about all these things. Listen, our mums are the best things since, since sliced bread. We both know that, but they didn't have this. They didn't have the internet. They didn't have all these things. So they just survived and what jobs they did. Look where we are now. But the fact that we've now got this and we can give this to our kids, I think we'd be doing them wrong if we weren't doing this for them. Mm. So in that respect, because I know a lot of people, like 70% of people that follow me are women. Um, come on, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. Philippa would be laughing at that. My wife would be laughing at that. But, um, but no, but, you know, and that's what I get most of my messages from, you know, I'm not calling anyone here, but I wish my I wish my um, my my father my uh, daughter's dad was like you. I would you know, the, and it's like I was not always like this. No, I've got a very colourful past, but the fact that I knew that I had to change something. So the fact that they're all wanting this message and love this message, and then I've got people that are up there that are like, bro, you don't know how much you've changed me day to day got a friend mike he tells he's very very wealthy done very well for himself and he, he said to me like when i told my friends about you and this was a penny drop for me when i told my friends about you and what time you get up and blah 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 he said i said your name and i didn't even get to move the step on they said yeah we already followed him we already follow him he's great and i was like got goosebumps now i was like and he's like mate and he very well for himself. He said, mate, these are like corporate people. He's like, I didn't think they'd know about you in a million years. Mm -hmm. And he was like, and and they follow you. He was like, do you not understand what you're doing? Like, start believing in yourself. Like what you're doing, the, the power that you possess, you don't get it. And I didn't. And Eve, from the conversation, that conversation that we had there, I, 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 it's got me to where I am today. But he was like, you need to start believing in yourself. You don't believe in yourself. Now I fucking do. And believe me, I am coming for it all. Everything that I am, mate. Everything. Well, going back to what you were saying Sorry. before, it, it's absolutely nothing that you don't deserve. Yeah. And I think that's important for you to actually yeah. realise. Yeah. Because so we can get so busy caught up and doing our own yeah. things. It becomes normal. Yeah. Getting up at these times, doing all these different like things, what we do. Yeah. Basically to feel at our best and to perform at our best for our families and for, you know, to achieve our goals, whatever it what whatever it's it's for. Yeah. We we can actually it can become that normal to us. We don't actually appreciate what we're doing. No. And and I know you you definitely don't sometimes. No. Do you know what I mean? Because you can always feel like you can be doing more. Yeah. And that's been my problem. Not many people doing more than you, trust me. Yeah. 
he's not. So, you know, all these things are to come. You deserve them all. Thank you. Um, I'm excited, yeah. I, I'm, uh, I'm super excited for you. But even like stuff that you touched on before over like our upbringing, then obviously similar backgrounds in the sense, no one's given us nothing. No. <laughs> We're able to get everything for yeah. ourselves, aren't we? Yeah. Um, but what was it like with your mum and like your dad and growing up as a kid, yeah. obviously? So, so growing up, um, I, I was having this conversation in, in the car on the way here. So to me, grew up on a council estate. Um, dad wasn't, well, was in and out. Mum brought us up and, you know, that was normal. So it's like to, 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 to say now that when I look back, the uh, certain things like, so my dad was a, was a heroin addict. He was on heroin most of my life um, and ended up passing away. Um, we ended up having a, a, an overdose um, and then he was pronounced basically brain dead. So he was, you know, I, people don't like the word, but I'll just say it anyway, because it's how he was basically cabbaged, just laying in bed, I think, well, I think it was 18 months to two years, might be wrong, but like, um, but yeah, so he was just basically on a bed. We couldn't switch the machine off because he could, because um, he could 30% breathe for himself. So the the machine was doing 70%, he was doing 30%. So he basically, he's, all his muscles like turning, you know, because he wasn't using them. Wasted the way. Yeah. So like, you know, but growing up on a council estate, uh, mum took care of us and it, it it was, you know, she, she's special and kudos to you, mum. Powerful, like, I understood that we didn't have what other people had because, like, we'd get PlayStations, like, two years after everyone else got them. But at the same time, like, the love and the fact that we didn't have what everyone else had, but everyone still wanted to come and play at our house. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like... Like what my mum generated in terms of she was basically the pillar of the community on the estate. Like people would be falling out, fighting. We'd have kids in our house. Our house was like, a, the, the door was like a revolving door. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. People dropping the kids off, so on and so forth. Sometimes my mum, you know, there, there wasn't much food in the cupboard, but then we'd be at our aunties on the estate where there was food. Do you know what I mean? And then other times we'd be doing all right and they'd be at ours. Do you know what I mean? So it was like, we didn't have much, but my mum, but we did. We had everything we needed. And that's why, that's like going forward in life, I've always been happy with being me. And do you think that that's why, sense. even though obviously you're under, under some pressure in ways now and you've got so much going on, you're still able to, because don't we, we, we can't, um, you're not negative. No. So I know you're going through stuff. Yeah. But you still, putting a positive message out through social media every yeah. single day consistently. Yeah. And you're still used, the energy's still good. Like yeah. what, what I was saying before, because again, I don't want people to um, misinterpret what I was saying. Like you're still positive, you're still happy. Yeah. Like maybe you're not as happy as you'd normally be, but to the average person on the street, you still are like happy, bubbly, energy's good. You're still doing all the things which you do. Yeah. Every day in terms of the routine, the exercise. Yeah. And all these things. So do you think that's maybe helped you in the sense that obviously 100% not having it easy when you're being grown yeah, up yeah 100, 100% I I know what what really matters mm. does that make sense of course yeah I know what what really what really really matters and and the fact that my mum installed that in me from an early age and my mum's been a person that is just give 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 and yeah, it's just mate. This this weekend she come she come down to my uncle's party. Like didn't drink, did did the whole party, the the food and blah blah. And then the next day she come to my house, she wanted to make you know made us dinner, took care of the kids. I did, do you know what I mean? I was How many like, brothers and sisters have you got? I've got ten. Set, well, yeah, nine, inclu nine load, yeah. including me, but that was that was from from yeah. from my dad's side. My dad was um, yeah, 
So there's 10 years all together. So there's 10 of us all together. Yeah, that I always say my dad was a rolling stone. <laughs> but um, yeah, my dad was, um, mm. yeah, my dad was, he was very active um, back in the day. Um, but and through to that, my mum again, like all of us are close due to my mum. Because my mum said, it's crazy, but it's realistic. My mum said, I'm not having none of my kids bring their brother or sister home as a, do you know what I mean? As a girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever, because they don't know them. Because we're all different colours, different ethnicities. Do you know what I mean? I've got a white brother. Uh, do you know what I mean? So it's like, um, so my mum made um, made the conscious effort to whether she got on with them or not. The other baby mums, we all laugh about it now, but like brought us all together and made that a thing. And that's my mum in general. My mum works in a Peru now where it's like basically uh, kids that have been kicked out of school and stuff like mm. she worked with kids a whole life and like that's like she brought that together so I think that that loving and that care and that 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 care and like that's definitely where it comes from my dad was an amazing guy when he wasn't you know when he wasn't doing all that I mean he's, he's you know when he died his funeral you couldn't considering he was a heroin addict for most of my life. No, I'm um, 33 years young now. So considering he was a heroin addict for most of my life, the amount of people that turned up, you couldn't get people, you couldn't, the church was full, like even outside, do you know what I mean? And like the the stories of of people like that had, um, that had come across him or, you know, I used to live next door to your dad and this guy was bullying me and he helped me out with it. and. My dad was the sort of person, heroin addict, that you'd leave in your house. You come back to your house, the house would be tidy, and he'd leave you a note saying, it, found a tenant in the drawer, sort of, sort of like it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But your house would be spotless, and that mm. was my dad. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it wasn't he like kept your, his morals. Yeah, because people have got like the stigma of like smackhead. Do you know what I mean? But like mm. to me, like my dad couldn't have been further away from that. He was still like very, very well respected. He used to work on the doors when when the doors was the thing to, you know, when all the hard cases were on the doors, he yeah. used to work on the doors. He was in the Paris, top boxer in the Paris. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think like that's where all, you know, certain things like in terms of fighting and stuff come from. But these little trials and tribulations like him being on heroin all my life, none of his kids have ever had heroin. So it's like, you yeah, know, it's funny because we obviously we are close and I know this anyway, but it's there's so many things we got uh, in common. It's the same yeah. for me. My dad passed in November before Christmas, yeah, November. Yeah. The same, you know, heroin. Yeah. Pretty much since I was two years, two years of age, and the same as you, fucking solid mum who's pretty much I owe me, <laughs> I owe me, I owe me life too, do you know what yeah. I mean? So, um, yeah, amazing. Um, do you know <laughs> what? I know. And we have, if, if if anyone's got- They don't get enough credit, do they? I no, say this all and the no. time. And, and, mm. and do you know what? Honestly, like, there's two great excuses there for us to go the wrong way. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Don't get me wrong. We'll we nearly have. Touch, <laughs> yeah, don't get me wrong. We'll probably, we nearly uh, have a few probably times, yeah, touch probably. On that. But, you know, there's mm. two major excuses there. Because that, because, you know, a lot of people do just give it, well, this happened to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, you know, and we didn't, we've, we've turned that into where we're at now. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the same as you, we do owe it to our mums because, mate, my mum played the mum, the dad, the, pff, mate, she's everything. And at the same time as looking after us, showed me how to show love to everyone else. Yeah, well, you can obviously see that in the way you are. Didn't cost a penny. With, with, with your own kids. Yeah. With Harlow. Yeah. Do you know, play fucking home. One of the best dads a, a kid could ever fucking... Thank you. have to watch what I say. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're just bursting to tears. I know, I know. You know, people have only got to watch the things I see you put on social media, just just for obviously for anyone who's seeing this and follows you. That's not social media. That's like, that's who the guy is every single day. He's with his daughter, so... You know, yeah, your mum's done a good job. 
Thank you. Thank we you. Better, we better move on, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then, yeah. Who's that talking about our mums and things like that? Maybe we'll end up a pair of fucking blubbering messes. <laughs> we still whoop your ass, though, don't worry yeah, about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Love a read them, right? <laughs> <laughs> But we'll go back to like the mornings then, the routine and things like that. What's a typical so, day in the life of the number one morning motivator in the world today? In the world today. How does this morning, I know that at the minute you might be a little bit, not where they'd usually be, obviously with having a new baby and stuff yeah. like that. But in general, what's the perfect morning for, for Lawrence? In general, I wake up, get into the, get, go, into the, go into the bathroom, alarm goes off, I get straight out of bed. What time is this? Um, at the minute, we're, we're four o'clock. So four o'clock. I get straight out of bed, go into the bathroom, switch the bathroom light on, I'm awake. And then I've got two little uh, two little pieces of paper. One says attitude, one says gratitude, and they're right by my mirror. Um, so like, I look into the, I look into the um, obviously I look into the mirror, because it can be a bit vain, and I'll be the first one to tell you. Um, so, so look into the mirror, check myself, make sure I'm still room. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I haven't used that word for years. Make sure I'm still room. Big shout out to Joey Essex. But um, but their attitude and gratitude. So so for me, my attitude is is everything. So it just reminds me like great attitude, great life. So I look at it and that's what I think of me. I think great attitude, great life, and then a smile. Smile into the mirror and that's our, and then gratitude, you know, and then I start thinking about all the things that I'm grateful for. I don't start wording them out because Philip will co probably come in and put me in a sleeper. Do you know what I mean? But like, I look at them things and in my mind, they'll remind me of them two things. So straight away, I'm showing gratitude for, I'm grateful for waking up, I'm grateful that I'm able to read this. Some people aren't even able to walk out of their bed and we take these things for granted. So I remind myself, before I do anything, of them two things straight away in the morning, like attitude, gratitude, smile in the mirror, and then, and then it hit myself, hit my face with the uh, with the cold water, brush my teeth. Um, I've I've usually got clothes on the on the on the what's it on the rail in the in the bathroom just to throw them on. Go downstairs, coffee machine on, sit down, um, and then jump to say what I write every morning. It's, it's entirely up to you. Um, so every morning then, the first thing I write is, um, I am so happy and grateful now that my business is changing one billion and one lives and mornings all over the world every month. I'm so happy and grateful now that my business is turning over billions of pounds every year, earning more so that we can give more. I am so happy and grateful now that my business has amazing people working for it or with the same intentions, passion, goals and drive. I'm so grateful for my three business partners. Together, we have the best bond and structure to keep our app at the top of the world. Our app, Morning Mindset, is the number one app in the world today and it shall stay there. We are the greatest infinite players. Let's go champ. <laughs> and you get that every single know morning. That just as much as you know <laughs> Yeah, and, and mm. I write that down mm. because for me, and I've got goosebumps in saying it because I am already there. I've already got this. I've already got this. And for me, I write that and I say that to you every day because because I need to. I need to. I need to. Um, it. Mm. Yeah, I need to make it. Uh, and the more you write it down, which make it, it's an action. It makes it. It makes it real. It takes it from a thought, brings it into into real. You know real time and then speaking and then after after i speak it to, to you and our other business partner dom then i um then i play it back and listen to it because we trust our own voice so when i listen to it back that reinstalls it that i believe what i'm saying then if that makes sense mm -hmm. um so yeah i send that to you every day because that's what i believe is already well, the, happened. There's an amazing saying, it's by Neville Goddard, you probably heard me speak about him, he says an assumption, although false, if persisted in, will harden into fact. Yeah. And it's it's about what you're saying, is you're speaking your future forward. Yeah. So you're talking about in the present tense, like it's here in this very moment in time. Yeah. And that's the key to manifestation. I put a post on today saying, um, it was about uh, basically worry. And when people are worrying and they're thinking about the negative things, what they don't want to happen, Essentially, what they're doing is praying for them because if you emotionalize a negative thought, 
then that's what you're attracted to. Yeah? And what you're also basically saying now is you're attracting your f- and creating your future by speaking it out and feeling the feelings of it happening. Yeah. Already, it's already there. And I yeah. was send you the text only saying, yeah. it's done. Yeah. Because if you can actually believe that it's done, then it's yeah. done. Yeah. If you can imagine and feel it's done, yeah. it, it's actually done. That's how, you, that, that, that's how that's how we create everything is through imagination and feeling. So it's yeah. like, you know, I just like to use that, like to explain that to people because people who don't understand this way of thinking, they can hear you speak like that and think, he's absolutely nuts. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. How, how, how can he think it's possible to do these things and to do this and to do that? And it's like, if you believe it, anything's, I know this this might sound like a really like overused cliche saying, but if you deeply and truly believe something is, can happen to the point where you can actually see it happening in your mind, there's nothing stopping it from becoming reality. Otherwise, yeah. you wouldn't be able to imagine and you wouldn't be able to see it. And so if you did a mission behind, like the more the mindset and the different stuff, what we're doing is to kind of drum that into people, especially kids and stuff like that. So you can create anything. What you can, if you can visualize, see it, feel it. You prepare to speak about it. You write it down, and then you structure your days around making that become, you know, become reality. There's absolutely no reason why you can't. Yeah, and it, it you know, it, and I like get goosebumps you when there. you send me the messages because I, Good. honest to God, I've said to you this is part one. Yeah, and I know where part, I know what part yeah. two is going to look like well, already. It, it, but mm. like what you, what like what you said there about going out and you. you, you People think like your like the secret law of atta- uh, uh, attraction. Like they think that you sit there, you think about it, and you get it. That's not how it works. How we've got to this point now, whereby where we are at with this app, is because I've manifested it, but I've took action. I've spoke to it to I've spoke about it to people. I've drawn people in to me that by speaking. Oh no, I don't know, but I, I spoke to my friend saying that I need an app building, blah, blah, blah. And he said, you do know T who you're training, Ollie. You know he makes apps, don't you? So I spoke to my friend that I train who told me that my other friend that I train, um, you know, new friends, so obviously I didn't know what he did. Um, he'd basically built apps. Mm. So, so it was like everything that I already needed was, was there. already there. You know, people can think this is crazy, but the universe was just waiting for me to just take action, just to start taking action. Simplest way I can put it. You don't understand what you've got around you until you start speaking about what you want or what you want to become. Right, I want to become a a car salesman, but I live in the depths of Scotland and I don't really know many people. Well, do you know what? I tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll... I'll start speaking to people on 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 the internet about it, or I'll start, you know, just a little thing like that. Something might not happen for uh, for for two months, might not happen for three months. But if you keep taking action towards this goal and keep seeing and believing keep that you you seeds. can get it, mm. it will happen. It's not a matter of sitting there, sitting on your hands and and and, and manifesting and thinking that it's you know and visualization, visualizing that. I mean, I'm. And expecting it to come to you, you've got to take action towards these goals. It's because a lot of people get that mixed up, don't they? The air you say, Yeah, see it, believe it, and it'll happen. And they go, Yeah, well, I've yeah, been. But there's one thing between saying it and actually believe, believing it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? As you're saying, when you deeply believe in something, then the universe, whatever, whatever you want to yeah. word it, finds ways to present these things to you. And I think the biggest thing what tends to put people off is they don't know how. Yeah. You don't know how or where these things are going to come from. Yeah. And, that, and that's what kind of makes them shy away from saying these things and actually having the belief that these things are possible. Yeah. But, you you, you know, you've got to have that, like, blind belief, so to say, to it. Yeah. You don't know where it's going to come from, but you just actually know that in some way it's possible and you're going to do it. Yeah. And then everything you need is just, you know, I would say when people find the purpose in life and they decide that's exactly what they want, and everything get, gets given to them. Yeah. I'm not saying it gets given to them, they don't have to move. But at the end of the day, if you truly believe that you're capable of doing something, I believe you'll move in the right direction naturally. Uh, you say inspired just means you're in spirit. Spirit just means you found you found your purpose, what you're here for. Yeah. There's um, a there's you know, there's there's a reason why all the greats, all the greatest of all times speak about this. I was watching LeBron. LeBron obviously got the the, the highest points of of, of all time mm. the other day, and he was just standing. He was he was looking around, and you could tell 
he's already been in that moment. Do you know what I mean? And he was just taking in, but you could tell he's already been there. Your likes of, uh, uh, your likes of, you know, Michael Jordan, like uh, Muhammad Ali. I am the greatest. I'm the heavyweight champion of the world. But you know, I was watching it the other day. Everyone thought he was crazy. He took offence, didn't he? Uh, yeah, yeah, said yeah. He, wasn't. he took offence. <laughs> yeah, everyone <laughs> thought he was crazy. What are you talking about? You're not the greatest. You you haven't even beat this person. This person. I don't care. I'm the greatest. What do you say? You know, he's trying to grab microphones off. You know, and 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 it's like. And then he'd become it. Conor McGregor, the same. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Everyone. And then he'd become it. This is, I'm getting goosebumps. It's not, it's not a secret. It's just people don't believe people. Oh, it's like only the greats talk about it. And then you go, oh, that could, that. Bad. And the big thing is people think they're so much different to, to, yeah, to and us. They're not. And they're not. They're no. just people. We're all just, no. we're all just people. The only thing what separates them from, you know, from anyone else is that they've got the, the belief in. Yeah. The desire yeah. is another one. You, know, yeah. you have to believe, you've got to have the desire. Yeah. You've got the desire and yeah. all these other special people you speak about, you've got the desire, Yeah. but they take the action, you know, and that, that's what manifestation is for me. Yeah. If you truly believe that you're capable of doing something, you'll move in the right direction physically and mentally anyway. Yeah. If you if you believe you're going to achieve all these amazing things, the last thing you're going to want to do is sit on your ass all day. And it, and, and it won't happen if that's the case. Exactly, you know I mean? yeah. So um so yeah. So that's what I, uh uh that's what I send you in the morning and then I'll write five things that I'm grateful for um in the secret book actually in the I've just literally got another one cuz I've filled the other one in yeah. so Mark got me this gratitude book which is amazing you can write um you write um everything that you're grateful for on on one side of the page and then on the other side it's basically your intentions isn't it so you set you your intentions in the future yeah mm. and uh, there's a nice little little quote every single day um so just completed one of them so i'm on to my second one now so uh so yeah right five things that i'm that i'm that i'm grateful for uh but grateful for in the future so that i, I write five things so at the minute I, i'm i'm obsessed with with flying my whole family to Antigua because my grandma and granddad are from Antigua, right? So they go back there six months of every year. So their dream is to have, so my grandma and granddad had nine kids. There's, uh, get this right, there's 14 grandkids and there's 17 great grandkids. So wow. there's seven, yeah. So that's like, and honestly, Mark, our family is like that. All of us are like, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We've got a family group and everyone's in it. It's like just entwined, like beautifully. So my grandma and granddad's dream is to have everyone and Antigua at one time. My grandma and granddad won't watch this because they're not, my grandma's on WhatsApp a little bit. My granddad's on the dominoes. <laughs> 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 but um, and I don't mean pizza either for you young ones. <laughs> um, so... So like that's like something that I'm writing down and I'm I'm, I'm seeing and I'm believing like they like the faces and you know and and um, and like their expressions and how much love and joy there is that we're all there at the same time and for me that's a once in a lifetime opportunity that I've that I've given them I've already given them I've got it done I've already given them you know and like they're the sort of things that I'm that that I'm grateful for. So I basically, getting back to it, I basically write things that I've already got done in the future. Mm. You know, told you about my home. Your future goals, but you write yeah, them in present tense. Goals, like but I actually... write them in present tense, yeah. Mm. Um, so, so then after, so I'll write that down. Um, and then after that, I'll get into my meditation. Um, I'll do, um, I've been actually going back to, remember the, the one that you sent me where you said, uh, you said, right, be grateful for three things that were hard in the past, be grateful for three things in the present, and then be grateful for three things in the future and visualize them and go through them. And so I've been listening to that, um, that I can't Same remember who it's by. Yeah, I've been mm -hmm. listening to that. And then that's like seven minutes. So I'll, I'll do that. And then I'll go into like, um, then I'll go into like meditation or I'll go down into my room and just like, visualize things for either morning mindset or, you know, a, a, a thing that I'm doing at the minute is like, if I'm having a little bit of a, 
an headache or a crawl or, whatever, or quarrel. Like I'm sending the person love in my meditation. We spoke about this before, haven't we? Yeah. Um, and I'm sending the person love and people think I'm mad for this, but it actually puts me on a different vibration to then, you know, say I speak to that person again or, or whatever, like they, it's a different feeling. Yeah, pe people probably watching, or most people I'd say you won't really understand, but without going into it, because we probably end up being here for about three or four hours. <laughs> yeah. Like everything's connected and everyone's yeah. connected. And, and you, you know, whether you believe this or not, there's actual science to prove that. The, it's called entanglement. So like the best example I give people, um, Reese is here, obviously you've heard me speak about this, haven't you? Is you can think about someone and you can be on the other side of the world and the next minute they ring you. Yeah. And that's down to the fact that everyone and everything is connected. Yeah. As I say, it's called entanglement and next receive um you, your your thoughts, yeah, yeah, your energy, your yeah. frequency, yeah. whatever it is, what you send them a signal to say that you're thinking about them. Yeah. So like a little tip, if if you're one of the lads and you haven't been getting on too well with your missus, start to see her and feel her, you know, feel love for her, feel like you know how much you're appreciated and things like that. And I guarantee for whatever reason you shall just end up back yeah. speaking again. This is something I practiced in 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 my own life, you know, I'm only human and me and yeah. my missus haven't been getting on and there's been times where I've just literally just thought about it, I've closed my eyes, slowed me breathing down, just sent her nothing but but love mm -hmm. and, yeah. and massive respect and appreciation because she's a special person. And yeah. The next thing, you know, we, we she receives it and we end up speaking. It's the same for people who are unwell, anyone who's well. Like I'm not religious, but for me, a form of prayer is just thinking about them, sending them love from my heart. And yeah. I, I know that it helps make them better. Yeah. And that's basically what you're saying, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You know? I, I think a key thing for that as well, um, especially with with nowadays like the fact if you have had a quarrel with someone that's putting you on a bad vibration mm. and the only person that that's hurting is you because what you're thinking about that person or what you want to say to that person or whatever that's you know it's all it's only going to hurt you, you yeah. yeah it's not going to so if you can change your thought process and put yourself on a different vibration of where you're the on, on the vibration of love you ever try fighting anyone that's doing this <laughs> come on yeah. you can't do you know what I mean it just doesn't you know it just doesn't it doesn't work like you're like whoa even you know you could get into a car and go oh, do you know what I've done it in traffic just lately some guy the other day ah, and I just went I'm sorry mate you know I'm sending you nothing but love that was my fault that wasn't my fault he went he didn't know what to do with himself he was like and you know that's like obviously in the physical but if I can create that reaction just by doing that, what about if I'm just vibrating that way all the time and sending that to other people? People probably think we're bonkers the way that we're talking here, but mm. but we're not. The best language, the best language, the best the language the is love. I, mean, Every, I think that's everyone the, understands yeah. love, don't they? And you know, if we if and if, if we can make that cool and accept make it, because that now cool. it's like all this gangbanger culture and yeah, you know, fucking like all those people are watching, listening to, you know, a lot of it can result in kids and, and younger people behaving in, in a fucking absolute crazy way. Yeah. You know, we're on a bit of a mission nearly, aren't we? To like, yeah. you know, we can both, yeah. we, we both train fucking like madmen. Yeah. We both fought. We can obviously physically look after ourselves. Yeah. You know, we try and harm our families and like that. Yeah. That probably be, and this is not ego. I'll do my best to make sure it's the worst mistake you would ever make in your yeah. life. Yeah, it's on. But at the same time. Oh, of course it's on. just like that on social media every day, just sending yeah. out loads Send of love. I hope you have a boss day, a lovely well, day. I, yeah. But I think that's, 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 the, that is what our purpose is. Mm. That's why we had the upbringing that we've had. Mm. That's why we've both fought. That's why we're both happy to not fuck out of each other now and again. Yeah. And it's like, it's that, it's that, um, that masculinity, but also showing the world that the vulnerability, right? Yeah. Showing the world that look, it's okay to be like but this. Showing you like, your vulnerability is actually fucking one of the most, the boldest and the, 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 the bravest things of in course. our society where, where we live and where we're brought up and they people think you're absolutely mad yeah do you know what I mean to show your emotional side or your, your soft side or your feminine side okay. I've been crying already after mm. five minutes do you know what I mean because I've got a lot on at the minute and I'm vulnerable but I'm not going to sit here and go mate I'm the yeah and this and that and I'm listen I can rock it with the best of them but also I can cuddle the rest it's not People know me. They know exactly what I'm about. I wear my heart on my sleeve. Like you said there, you hurt my family, whatever. But at the same time, 
like, you know, people can understand what I'm trying to do. And I've had messages off, 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 off people just saying like, do you know what, lad, you've, you've, you've turned the corner, you like, and I've had messages off mates thinking I've lost my head on the clock, mushrooms. Yeah. Like, you've been on the mushroom. What's going on with you? You all right? The way that you're speaking, but so, but that's okay. Everyone's trying to work it out and it's not for everyone, but love is right. Love is for everyone. Mm -hmm. So if we can. And that's all people are seeking, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? That's I, all. It doesn't, you'd ask anyone in the world, what's you know, if they're totally honest. Yeah. What's the one thing, what, what, what we all, what we all need. Exactly. And, and, and that's what it is. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you know, I feel like the people that are on the wrong path and, and I feel like the reason why they are maybe there is because they've had not much of it. Maybe they've not had much of it or they've not, had it in 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 the right way, or do you know what I mean? Mm. Maybe that's what they're lacking in. Maybe a bit of love and, and, and empathy. But if you're to look in your case, you could have easily gone down that road, and obviously, it's the upbringing, the community, the the closeness of all like your family and your mum, and all these things. That's what's well, saved you in a sense. Well, yeah, or took you down a different road, so to yeah, say. Yeah. Well, I did in you know in the beginning, I I, I did go the wrong way. Um, can we speak about this on here or what jump? Are you going to pause this anyway? It, look, we can cut it out if we need to, but. Um, I'll, what jump to do? What do you think? <laughs> you can say whatever you want. Yeah. And if we need if we need to go, we'll cut it out. Um, is that okay? So, so yeah. So That's the beauty about being in Liverpool podcast studios. They can do all this stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like Jacob, the main man, he's like. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, look, you know, to be honest, because I'm sat here and I'm saying that I am going to be honest and, and I did promise myself today I was going to come and I was going to speak my truth and I spoke to Brian, you know, um, before he went and did his podcast and he said to him, I said, oh, good luck for today, smashing. He said, I'm just going to go on there and be myself, mate. He said, I'm not worried. I'll just be myself. He said, however it sits or resonates with people, that's fine with me. I'm still all right. Still got my wife, still got my kids, you know. I just hope it helps someone. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to speak my truth because personally, I that's what I want it to do. Um, so yeah, a um, little bit of a re uh, rewind. Ended up ended up going uh, going away um, to prison when I was 18 for a crime that I did not commit. I've done the, I ended up having to do the time. So if I did do it, I could admit to it now, right? Um, and, you know, appeal after appeal, got knocked back. And that was just, I felt the cards that were delivered to me, not because I was an angel, but for me, growing up and how I ended up in that circle was, and this is a massive thing um, that I wanted to get across today, from a young child, like my mum used to argue with everyone because I was a bit more like my dad, like a little boy, my brother, he was really good. So people would come up to the pram and go, oh, is that the naughty one? Or is that the good one? Make my mum would be over the pram. They're both the same, they're both the same. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And like, I was constantly, from a young child, told I was the naughty one, I was the naughty one. My mum was like, you're not the, you, but I was constantly, you're the naughty one, you're the naughty one. Do you know what I mean? And by a lot of people around me. So that was part of my paradigm. That was like, I believe that's who you, I was. You took ownership of the label, yes. which basically so what people I, put on you. Yes. So from, from, and I mean, from a young child, you know, six, seven, whatever, I started acting up because that's how I thought I got, that's how I got attention. I was the naughty one, right? This is what everyone told me that I was. So I started being the naughty one. And I, I'm not a horrible person, but I'd just be like, I'd be cheeky. I'd say things that you shouldn't say. I'd go too far with things. I'd, do you know what I mean? And then that that rolled on into, into, uh, into later life. Like mm -hmm. in school, it was naughty, it was cheeky, getting, it, getting suspended and all. And like, then it, it just carried on. And then what happened was is instead of, going to me, you know, my brother's, you know, worked all his life really good and, and so on and so forth. Instead of being a good one, I actually started to look at people that 
were up to no good as like, because obviously my dad wasn't around and when he was, he was up to no good. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So then, um, so then I started to look up to people that were up to no good. And they were like- the, Those role the, models. They were my role models, Mark. So like, you know, and and, and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, um, I'm not trying to get any sympathy or anything here. I'm basically saying, you know, what you say to your kids, they will become, if you, you know, and it, my mum didn't say it to me, but it was said to me a lot. So I ended up wearing that cape. I am the naughty one. So I'm just going to crack on and do what naughty ones do. I was always told you're going to go to prison. You'll end up in prison. You, you'll, you'll end up in prison. And, the, you know, the weirdest feeling was, Matt, when I ended up there, I knew I was, I shouldn't have been in, in prison, but when I ended up there, you know, I was up to no good anyway. It was only karma for what, I, you know, the things that I had done wrong. But like, when I ended up there, I was like, oh, well, this is what everyone told me I was going to be anyway. So it's not, it's no skin off my nose. This is what everyone told me I was going to be. So it wasn't a sense of achievement, but it was a sense of, well, yeah, you were all right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And without having that father figure, around and my mum trying to you know juggle eight of the kids yeah well no because they were all they're yeah. all different they're all they're, it, was, mm. it was to different different mums mm. but like you know like my mum trying to juggle work my brother and me getting older my mum still working but they're out doing uh, you know up to no good and whatnot and it it was just like it's i needed a good strong male role model and i had my uncles and stuff and they were amazing do you know what i mean and we i used to get sent to my uncles when i was naughty and blah but he just wasn't enough i'd just been told too much what i was going to be that i'd become it and then when i become it i ended up coming out of of the nick at 22 so i went in when i was 18 came out at 22 and then you know they're like the most um they're like the most i'd say as a, from a young person's point of view, I'd not long turned 18 when I, when I went there. So like, that's when people like going on holiday with the mates, getting jobs, driving and, and all these things. And basically molding themselves, growing up a bit and molding themselves. Becoming a, becoming a man. Mm. Becoming a man. So like, I had to grow up quick because I was in young offenders, but like, you you know, being out course and blah. So you're with men inevitably. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So I had to grow up really quick and then, what happened was is I ended up basically not coming out and like had this life then of like all these mates that do these certain things. And then it was kind of like, well, this is just me. This is maybe who I'm meant to be. I didn't have anyone there saying to you, you know, like, come here, but like, well, I did to an extent, but everyone else was, do you know what I mean? Mm. So it was, it was tough and then, you know, things just kind of kind of flowed like the wrong the wrong way, and you know, I ended up losing my dad. So that what happened to my dad happened to me when I was in prison. Now, me and my dad were writing to each other because my dad was in Nick at one point <laughs> when I was in the Nick. Do you know what I mean? So like, me and my dad was writing to each other, and it was like that was my life, bro. It was like it's a bit surreal to some people, considering. 95% of my Instagram followers do not know that I've been to this place. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So like, so I've, I've come out and you know, but the, that ended up happening to my dad and then my dad passed away. It was pneumonia because he's just fucked in the bed. And then like, I've just been doing, you know, the wrong things because I still don't know any difference to be honest. I'm just, I'm just going with the flow now. I've grew up around these people and now this is the path that I think that's led for me. Um, and it and it took for um it took for um took for something crazy to happen in my life where my 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 mate ended up um getting getting killed um by my other friend and you know it was a bit of a mad messy situation i got pulled in i didn't have anything to do with it but like you know and then i was bailed i ended up having to go to my friend's funeral where everyone thought that i had something to do with it I, I can't explain to you that feeling that it was it's 
Take a big breath, me. Probably, probably the, probably the hardest moment in my life. Um, definitely going to a, a funeral where everyone was like looking at me like, no one did anything, but you know, everyone was looking at me like, you're a piece of shit, what are you doing here? But if I hadn't gone there, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I couldn't you... not go there. What happened was an accident. It wasn't, do you know what I mean? So like, and mate, and the, and just out of all that, my daughter was born. <sighs> and like, I just, and that was the I same just, point. yeah. Yeah. So she came at the right time. Yeah. I just, I just threw, threw all that, like, you know, like my partner at the time, like we was up court and she was pregnant. You know, do you know what I mean? It's like, it's just surreal, mate. Surreal. And, um, and through, through all that, like I'm still me. <laughs> Don't know what happened. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> oh, okay. And through that, through all that, I'm just like. I've, you know, I went through all that with my dad. So my sole purpose was was to be the fucking best dad you've ever fucking seen. <laughs> and you know, this is this is my truth, and this is the reason why. Basically, I am the dad that I am because of because of that, and I am like so. I don't Do you know think because you've been through so much, that's a big part of you know what your purpose is now? That's to help other people, to make other people happy, to make other people healthy, and yeah, obviously to guide the the younger further down the line. Obviously to, to guide and help parents be better parents and help kids become better grown ups. Yeah through all the different experiences which you've had to go through, which you've actually made you the person who do you know who, what who you are today. Do you know how, uh, how I knew I was, how, 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 like now I realise how I know I'm special. So, so I turned the corner was like, right, forget all this bollocks. Like I need to, you know, I need to, with my daughters, like I need to start like cracking on properly now. So, uh, my friend, uh, Hayley Sashua, I love you to bits, mate. She, she like, veered me onto this path. She said, oh, I need a model. So I was, I, I was fighting at the time. She said, I need a model for this brand. Uh, so I was like, right, all right, martial artist. So I did the modeling. Then she said, oh, I've told you for years you should be a model. But I was one of the lads, not doing modeling. It's for my pizza. Not doing that. Forget Did you fight at the time? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and like, that's another thing. Like, so, so, and yeah, all, all right, sh sweet. Uh, so she sent me pictures to the to the agency, and Rachel at the agency, she she said, yeah, we love him. Yeah, send him down. And you know, I've from going to going from where I started, and then going through all that, I modelled for. Model for some of the biggest brands in Britain, JD, Foot Asylum, um, Regatta, ASOS. You know, I was doing all these things. So all that's like, oh, you, you, you're modeling, you're your little queer muppet and all that. I said, <laughs> I'm not asked, mate. I'm not going back there. I'm not asking. Do you know what? Modeling, some some jobs you're getting, you're getting three grand for the day. Other jobs, you're getting 500 quid. Now, if you work out what they're doing and what, do you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's worlds, worlds apart. Um, but like, this was it. 
ended up going on Emmerdale, right? So to go for it. So I, <laughs> I didn't know so, that. so so yeah. So I went on. So I ended up on Emmerdale. Had a two. Uh, I was. I played like. Ended up playing like an henchman. You know, like so a bit of a bit of an heavy uh, yeah. on Emmerdale, um, and I just realised that um, that I am. I'm not. That, different. Yeah, bro. I really, who can go from, you know, there is people that have done it, but who can go from that and then to that? And do you know what, Mark? The fact that I was on Emmerdale and I was at ASOS and, and people were saying to me, oh my God, you got that job and blah. It, it, it was like, yeah, it's just normal. Like, I, like I've always knew that like nothing ever overwhelmed me, if that makes sense. Like I never got really overwhelmed. The only times, and this is me being honest with you, the times that I would get overwhelmed is like having to go into a bank to set a bank account up. That Simple used to thing. scare the living shit out of me. Anything that I'd have to walk into an office and, and you know, like whereby I don't know the people, I'm at, like, I get nervous. Setting a bank account up, bro. But that relates back to... The other world. The, well... You know, like when you're 18, you're setting your own bank account up and you work and you're banking up. Yeah. So I'd like... You bypassed skip, all that. Bypassed all that. And then basically, you know, I've got to go and speak to someone who's like asking me... me bit, and, and I'm like, oh, this is foreign to me. The number one morning motivator you used to be scared to go in banks and set. But this is like, everyone's got their own little things that they're, you know, and like... So anyway, so to go from where I come from and then get to like the fact that I'm on Emmerdale, I thought, Psh, hold on a minute. I'm, I'm I'm actually not, do you know what I mean? And that didn't overwhelm me. Um, there was one turning moment, moment for me um, and that was because I'd been on Emmerdale. Someone had rang up and to, to my agency and complained, what are you doing having him on TV, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, the, the, the head of the, the agency had come on and said, listen, he's got a child. He's changing his life around for the better. Basically told and said, Emma Day already know, I told him to fuck off. Do you know what I mean? He's mm -hmm. like that, he's abrupt like that. And just told him straight. And then rang me up and said, people are ringing up and all that, but we just want you to know. You know, we've got your back. We've got your back. And you know what? Like that made me think like, wow. A lot of the time you feel like you're on your own in this world, can't you? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Especially coming from my background and to have a job with these people where- To make that transition. Everything's proper now. Mm. Yeah. And then the fact that, you know, he didn't have to do that. He could have gone off. Oh, they didn't have to take me on in the first place. But the fact... But I think that's a very, very strong point to make because I know there's a lot of people in one world and their biggest fear is they don't know how to get from one to the other. Yeah. And they're living with that every day and all that through different people who we speak to. Yeah. You know, it's like people reach out for help or you get into conversations with people who you know and they're like, they, they don't actually like being where they are and they want to be somewhere else. Yeah. You want to make that transition which you've actually made. Yeah. Which you're speaking about openly now. And they struggle so much because they don't know how they're going to do it because it's so unfamiliar. Yeah. And it's so different. And in a sense, they can't ever see themselves being there because they only know one way. Yeah. But it is actual, it, it's it's actually possible. Yeah. And it's not as hard as what you think it no. is. And you'd be, do you know what? I've got goosebumps mm -hmm. now because you'd be surprised how like how much more people love you. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. on the other side, it's like you can still be yourself. Like I can, you know, selling ca you know, get cars and that, and you're like, but what, and, you, and you can still, whoa, hold on a minute. What of the big dark cloud? Yeah, and you can sleep mm -hmm. at night and, you know, when like people drop this stigma over you, you find people like want to have a conversation with you and talk to you, especially with me. They uh, All tracking back like through that. So I knew like I wasn't meant to be, but because I have been through all that, I can sit on my Instagram. I can sit on this podcast and cry because you're not going to put anyone in front of me that's still here, that's still doing, that's, that's, that's doing the things that I'm doing, that's speaking about the things that I'm speaking about. It's a father to the child like I'm a father. 
and has got so many loved ones and, and, and carries so much love like me that has been through that. So I am, I am more than happy to be vulnerable in this situation because of all that. All that has allowed me to now change one billion and one lives and mornings all over the world every month for the simple reason of I've been through that trauma that you're going through. 95% of my followers don't know that I've been to this place and I've been saving it for this. And you know what? Whether you, you unfollow me or whether whatever you feel like about this situation before this, you didn't know this about me. And I'm giving you my truth. So when I do change one billion and one mornings and lives all over the world, all you young people and all you older people that are trying to make that change, you can look and go, well, fucking hell, if he can do it, I can do it. And and that that is one of the key I things that I wanted to, today. bro, that is what I wanted to get across today is that if I can do it, go through all that, go through all that and have to manoeuvre. And I'm, you know what, bro? The first thing I want you to do is smile all the way through it. I kept, I, I knew, like, you know, and my mum was a rock through this, bro. <sighs> a rock. She be fucking proud, and she watches this. <laughs> she's, she's, <laughs> she's the reason that, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I'm just at the point now where I just want to do beautiful things for people. I want to, I want to change people people's mindset the in the morning because, mm. yeah because everything starts in the morning right that's the start of the day like that's that's when you decide Mor what the, my mornings do. have changed my obviously I came from a fighting career and whatever else and over time finally I started studying successful people like I have this big thing whatever you want to become there's someone out there doing it now find them people that the best thing I say that I said to you the other week that yeah. I want to put a video on I spend mornings with fucking like some of the best personal development coaches, successful athletes, every single morning. I spend hours and hours and hours and hours with them every week. So can studying you, can them. you, sorry, can Come you on. explain that though from the start because you still haven't done a video on it. Yeah, so, 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 so a lot of people feel the like they, they, they haven't got access to all these people who are going to benefit them to be around the right kind of people. Now there's so much negativity uh, or people feel so negative towards social media and the the, the, the the dark and the bad side of it. Yeah. It's a fucking massive distraction. It brainwashes people. People pollute their minds with, with these phones all day, every day, five, six, seven hours a day on fucking social media, scrolling absolute nonsense and comparing themselves to all these other people. Then at the end of the week or at the end of the month or at different times in the life, wonder why the fucking abs are you getting nowhere, why the relationships are crap, they're not getting on with the people around them, why the businesses are failing. Because you're just carrying, you're just glued to these devices all day, every day. But then on the flip side, what, what you're doing and obviously what my intention is behind social media is to use them for good. Yeah. Because they're absolutely fucking amazing things if you use them in the correct way. If you use them and you don't allow them to use to use you. And like through the app and through these other different things, what we're doing through the people I spend time with every app for the last 10 years, I spend time with fucking neuroscientists, fucking, you know, psychologists, I've spent time with parental adv advisory fucking teachers. <laughs> it's like, where would we have access to these people without without mobile phones and without devices? And, and that's what you've got at your fingertips every morning. So you can get up every morning, you can scroll bullshit and compare yourself to everyone and, and see what all these other people are doing, all these amazing things, highlight reels on social media. Or you can dedicate an hour in the morning to, to spend time with fucking Jim Rohn, yeah. <laughs> Bob Proctor, yeah. the, Mr. Number, the number one more motivated yeah. in the world today. You can yeah. listen to a podcast, someone inspirational, motivational, all this information's at your fingertips and we don't use it. Yeah. So I, I think mean? it's, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to nail it down for you. So you, where, the way you put it to me is, there's this great saying, you are the people who you spend the most time with. Yeah. yeah? And, and, you know, so let's just say the the six people who you spend your most time with. So if you wake up in the morning and you listen to, you know, Bob Proctor, all these people, then when you're in the car to work, successful you're, people. Yeah, you're listening to the same motivational, successful people. If you work out, you're probably spending four hours a day with these people. Mm. And people don't understand that. Like the power of the internet now, 
the the six people that you spend most time with can be these people. And do you know what? The more you listen to them, the more you start talking talking like them. The more you start you acting like them, the more you start beliefs, thinking yeah, like them. And, and you start exactly. to behave that way. And before you know it, you're not just spending time with amazing people on a device and on YouTube and on social media. You're actually attracting amazing people to yeah. you because you're becoming this, you're becoming an amazing. Yeah, you no, know, exactly. we're all amazing. It's just we 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 just don't don't actually fucking know it. Most people believe. You know, for, especially from where we, you're a worthless piece of shit. Yeah. That's what most most lads I, I grew up around, that's what I see them now, fucking in, in betting shops, in the boozer. But they just believe that they're worthless and they're capable of nothing. They just try and escape themselves every single day in the shitty lives, what they're, you know, existence, what they're living. Yeah. And and you're a testament that it doesn't have to be that way. Like, it doesn't. We no. control and create whatever we fucking, we want, if we believe we're capable of doing it which takes a lot of hard work because you basically got to reprogram your whole belief system from, from you know, having the the, the belief and the worldview that yeah. you're not capable of all these amazing things and you're not worthy of all these amazing things, but every single one of us. And that's that's obviously your your mission now through all, all the different, you know, you could say trauma and the negative experience which you've made you the person who you are. You know, you, you've got every qualification or every every badge, whatever, yeah. whatever you need now to actually come on social media and, and, and tell people, you know, you've got every reason to be happy and grateful and to smile and yeah. to be positive and healthy. And I just want to give people, just, just, I just want to give people a quick insight onto how me and Mark met you and where I was at in life, <laughs> where I was at in life. I actually told him the other day, didn't you? Like, we have a joke on, on how we met because we know where, we, where we're going to be. So, so we actually joked. So anyway, um, I was obviously doing calm drinks. Everyone used to know me as Mr. Calm. Now this is the thing, like. You've done modeling. You've been on Emmerdale. You've been a fighter. You've been, been Mr. Calm. You've been, yeah. yeah. And like, listen, no one's, no one's reinvented themselves more than me. Do you know what I mean? No one's reinvented themselves and I'm not scared to do it because this is the thing. It's my life, right? So I need to do what I need to do what makes me feel good. So anyway, getting back to the point. So I ended up uh, driving, driving to, driving to Liverpool with, uh, with a car full of calm drinks. I tried getting hold of Mark and tried meeting him. Yeah. That's like getting into Fort Knox and still is now sometimes because yeah. <laughs> he's a busy man. Very, very busy when man. When you've so, got me, you've got me. No, you? when you've got him, you've got him. And if he does give you his time, it's, it's special. Um, so anyway, I came and came and sat came and sat down with you and um came hit, to a wake, didn't you? With yeah, some came, to, came to a wake. I think you what was his was it Ian, the other kid that you brought over? What was his name? Mark. Mark, that was it. Another Mark, that was it. So um so anyway, hit him with the with the spiel with the with the cancers. Sales pitch. Yeah, the sales pitch and like um and that was it. But I was saying to and then um, Mark ended up having the drinks and, and we rolled on from there. But I was saying to Mark, like, at that time, like I was, you know, I had, and this is no word of a lie, me and, me and my, my wife laugh about it, but I had every 10 out of 10 influencer bird on Instagram posting these calm drinks. I was relentless. They were everywhere. I had guys phoning me up going, have you got that bird posting your drinks? Can you bend me on to her? I'm like, no, mate. Like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to run a business here. But like, at that time, everybody thought I was flying. Like, the drinks were everywhere. It just looked like a, a million pound business. I was sleeping on a circle sofa at my mum's house with my feet on the floor and my head on the on the on the <laughs> on the on the, on the cushions. Yeah, I was sleeping on my mum's sofa. So this is the realization. Of like for everyone that you know, like don't get sucked in to what you're seeing on Instagram. I was sleeping on my mum's sofa. I got my own apartment after after a little while, but you know when I went to Mark and it Mark with a sales pitch and had the energy and everything that made him buy cans and keep buying cans. And I went to five other shops after you. When I was doing this, Mark, I was sleeping on my mum's sofa like this because the because the other chair was too small, it broke my neck. And this one was like a nice circle sofa that I'd give her for one of my one of my apartments. I've moved house more times than you've had up dinners. So like, so I've sat down with me with my feet, and, and that's how I used to sleep on it like this. But at that time, like to look at my Instagram, you'd be like, whoa, he's the it's man. Funny. He's flying little did they know. <sighs> Mate, I was I was in the depths of the depths, but I, but the key thing is, bro, I couldn't go. 
backwards, mate. So I'm on the floor as it is. So the only way is that way. Do you know what I mean? That's the only way I'm going it. And I didn't stop. I didn't stop. I was relentless with it. And do you know what? Going into going into shops and doing like little jokes and yes, calm drinks, doing little skits and and it spread like wildfire. People will shout me on a car, yo, Mr. Calm, Mr. Calm, what's happening? You know, and I'm getting the same now with the Mr. Morning Vote motivator. Everyone's saying smile and all that. So it's like it's catchy, but at the same time, like, man, that was a tough period for me. And to look at it's me. So tough now, isn't you it? Were the, yeah, whoa. It probably even tougher. It's even tougher now. It's even tougher. You know when I know right now for me is tough. And I feel like that's why you appreciate me even more. The fact that I can still give you to me, you're you're a successful, you're that. And I take so much from you, the way that you cut off time for your wife, the way that you cut off time for your family, the way that no one can get hold of you when you're doing this with your kids. No one that I the little things that I take from you that like in, in in little sections, the way you section things off and when you're with someone, they get all of your time and, and that's it. And you don't, there's no, it's non-negotiable. And the way that you manoeuvre, I've took that into my life. And since I've incorporated that, like, you know, everything is flowing, but you know the point where I'm at in a minute, it's dark. It's it's not dark. It's No, it's not dark. It's hard. It's, it's, I, I just say that because it's like, well, it is when I wake up in the morning anyway. <laughs> it is when I wake up in the morning. Some of you might not know about that. What you do? Because the clock's going back early, but uh, going, going whatever, whatever they are. But, uh, but yeah. I, well, what I'm going to say is that you, you, you're on social media every day. Yeah. And that is you. Yeah. And Regardless I'm still of, giving, We have our ups and downs. You're yeah. still giving the energy. You're still yeah. positive. You're still happy. Yeah. The routine's still leave. Yeah. There's a new baby in the house. Yeah. I'm still getting my voice note at four o'clock. Yeah. Every single morning, yeah. Affirmations, whatever yeah. you need to do, yeah, to become successful, it, yeah. it, it's getting done, yeah. And it's not down to having material wealth because we haven't got material wealth, no. Right now, no. But it's done. It's done. I have got it. But the smiles but and the happiness and all these yeah. things don't come down yeah. to material wealth, big, no. fast, nice, fucking glamorous cars or no. anything. No, it, it's it's who you are without these things. Exactly, and that's what I think people really need to understand because we're in this constant cycle of I've got nice things to say all the time yeah but they're not what make me happy I'm yeah. in heaven walk yeah. my daughter to school yeah for 15 minutes in the morning yeah that brings me to tears none yeah. have ever brought, brought us fucking bought us brought a team at tear to me eye but I yeah. think it's so important for people to understand that you can sit here without all the material things at this moment in time yeah and still be happy grateful and put that positive message out for people consistently every single day to make their lives better yeah so you know little things and this is what people can take from this two two different stories uh, it you would want things are very very tight <laughs> at the minute at the fact whereby you know going back to like i made you know philip a, a, a macro curry the other day out, out, out of nothing right and um because mate i can't afford to go and buy an expensive dinner or even buy anything from the shop yeah so i said right well look in the cupboards i'll, I'll knock something up i made this macro color and this comes again from how my mum wrapped things right so how she made things to be the love do you know what i mean that's so so i made this this macro curry which is out of this world because i can cook um and out of stuff out of the cupboard. And then what else I did was, you know, I got two champagne champagne glasses, filled them up with, with, um, with, I think we had sparkling water. So I filled up with sparkling water and lit a candle. And then that was our tea. And she come in and she said, and she started crying. I said, what are you crying for? You, what, what's up? She said, like the way that you can make me feel like in a times where, anyone else would be like pulling each other's hair out. You need to go and do this. You need to go and do that. She understands my journey. She understands where I come from. She understands where we're going. So mm. she knows, you know, pff, mate, like, and the fact if that- If we can be happy now. If we can be happy now. <laughs> and when I spoke to you on the phone and explained that to you, you said, you said to me, do you know what? It takes people millions of pounds to get what you already understand, what you've got. And I am able to be happy in, 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 
you know, with with whatever I've got. Abundant. Yeah, yeah, I feel abundant. The fact of that, everything that I've been through, the way that I've been brought, and like, and this is a big thing for people, and I always put it out there, I, I do put it out there. Me and Harlow, we have a walk to the charity shop. We've got this thing that, you know, every two weeks or something, we'll go to the charity shop. The women in there know her now, they love her. We go to the charity shop and we pick a, we pick a, she picks a board game. Um, people be like, board game? What's that? <laughs> yeah. So she picks a board game and then we go home and we play board games. We played three board games this morning and like, and we play a board game and I, sh I, I let her pay and, and so on and so forth. And, and she might not understand it now, but I'm going to keep doing it. And as she gets older, she'll, she'll realize that, you know, we don't have to go to the Trafford Centre, you know, stop taking your kids to the Trafford Centre, spending loads of money, getting home, then spending no time with them. They need your time. You know, kids are killing themselves and all sorts now. And I'm not saying it's down to the fact that, you know, we've got the internet and all that, but you've got the power to move that internet away and have this with your child. This is more important than anything. Money, cars, houses. You give your you you work you work you work all your life and, and spend no time with your kid, but leave your kid a load of money. It's not going to know what to do with it, mm. and it could end up the a heroin addict. Most important thing is the connection, isn't connection. it? Connection. I need my so the time that I spend with my daughter having murders at the minute because she don't like losing. <laughs> so the other day she lost five times on the snakes and ladders. She's crying. I said, right, well, but. When I went down the snake, she's laughing at me. I said, <laughs> if you're going to, it's typical, yeah? I said, and then I said, right, let me explain something to you. If you're going to laugh when I go down the snake, make sure you don't cry when I beat you at the end. She went, what do you mean? I said, well, if you're going to laugh at someone when they're losing, you've got to be prepared to laugh when you're winning, when you're losing. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So anyway... We carried on. I said, "Do you, do you want? A, what's it? No, I want. I I want to play." I said, "Okay." So we carried on playing. Then she lost again. She said, "Right, I want to go to bed now." I said, "All right, you can go to bed now, but you can still win if you carry on playing, and that's a key." So, do you want to carry on playing until you win and go to bed on a high, or do you want to go, or do you want to go to bed now Something. crying? Yeah. And she went, "Right, I'll play till I win." And she ended up beating me. And she was like, she said to me, she went, don't worry, daddy. I'm not going to cheer. You played really well. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And yeah. uh, But it was that. Priceless. Yeah, mm. it, it was priceless. But that time is like, you know, she could, if I hadn't done that there, I'd have to keep doing it because it's still, you know, mm. um, like, that's something then that like she'll grow up then or crying every time that she loses. And yeah. and like, we're not my ass is losing's a part of life. So that the fact that I can teach her now at the age of five that that's, you know, this is gonna happen, mm. you know, and it, and it's okay. And do you know what? You can laugh at other people me, when they leave. You were laughing you can... this morning because um it was Pancake Tuesday last night. So we had yeah. like a treat treat dinner. Yeah. We had bacon bams. Nice. <laughs> All the vegans are gonna rate me like <laughs> We had bacon bams. We love a bacon bam in our house. And um, so we had bacon bams anyway. And Katie bought this bacon and she fucking frazzled it. So, like, it probably looked like there was loads, but then there was hardly an answer. The baby's sitting there. Or my daughter's sitting there. My son's there. My missus' there. And um, I bite into this bam. Like, There's not much bacon on that, is there? And she goes straight away. Well, you should be grateful for what you've got. And I just look, looks at my missus, looks at the baby and like... And yeah. You know you're doing something like it's then little tiny like this the most simple like yeah things in the world. She's like you've got food you should be grateful. Yeah. I'm like wow. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And she's installed that back in it. In it. That's something. Yeah. That's how it comes. It comes back on you. You'll be getting educated by your kids. That's yeah. When, in all honesty, that's when you know I can I can say I'm, I'm pr things like that make me proud. Yeah. They really do. And that's not like me being a big head or and when you're when you're getting educated by seven-year-old daughter over like being grateful for having food on your plate and things like that you're like you know i'm doing something right yeah we're doing me you know we're doing something right yeah it's like me me missus and even like yourself and, yeah you know when that's everything in it just like the little simple things yeah. like that hallow done me the other day so i can't I remember i said in scanos uh in on a circuit in scanos back garden one time can't do this he looked at me dead in the eyes and said 
there's no such way. There's a can't lad. You can't. And it stuck in my head and doing a triathlon and then and as I'm running in this triathlon, you know what I mean? It like my in my head I'm going, I can, but I'm laughing. So I I've been I've been installing it into Harlow. Um she wanted these uh uh tattoo, you know, the the tattoo stickers. Yeah. She said mate you can't get them anywhere and she's gone right you promised me if I, if I do good at school you're getting a tat and she had she got a, you know a good good um good report. good report so I'm like right sweet so we're going in shops went in one shop couldn't find it went in another shop I said we can't we, we can't find them she went there's no such word as I can't daddy <laughs> we don't go home until we find the stickers remember we don't give yeah. up we keep going I looked at her and I was like, and there it is. I started laughing. I said, right, mate, we went another 12 shots, but we got there in the end and we mm. found them. And it was like, I had to stand on for what I've been, for what I've been, um, what I've been putting out there, what I've been saying to her. I had to then stand on and hold myself accountable and practice what I preached. Mm. And there you go. Harlow got a tattoo and she was, she was happy, but that's at it. And it's great once it, once it starts especially when it starts coming back to you like that, you realise that Your messages, right, I'm doing the, the right yeah. thing here. Yeah. But yeah, the, the, I think more than anything, the, the key thing is time. Time, something that you said to me when, when you hold your little girl's hand on the way to school every it's morning. A because every morning. It's a different hand every morning. And, mm. and that for me, you know, if you have got children, and this is what I'm saying, how important, how important the mornings are, not to be too deep, but... The, the next morning you might not wake up or they might not. So the fact that you've got that one morning, that one morning to to wake them up in the best way that you can, you know, we're going to help you with that if you want it. And who wouldn't my, want it? My thing always been like, win your mornings, win your days. And it's yeah. like, you know, it, it is a massive, this is not a sales pitch. This is, this is we know this because it's changed my life. My mornings have changed my whole, my whole life. Yeah. Like the cold shower. I remember I sent you a cold shower, didn't I? Yeah. I was, yeah. I remember. Yeah. Like the cold water, all these different things. I yeah. do them because the way they make me feel and how I feel has an effect on the people around me and that makes them feel good essentially because we feed off each other's energy. Yeah. Which is what you were saying before, where you wake the kids up. And it's yeah. like, you know, that that that's everything. We can help people have a better morning. Obviously win the morning. Then obviously it's not just them who benefit. It's, it's the people who they love, the people closest to them. And then collectively, if you want to go, it's the collective consciousness all benefit from, you know, you just being happy and spreading that the ripple effect, something I want to speak about. It's like, yeah. you pass that on to everyone who you come into contact with. You all know it, yourself, the amazing. amount of messages that you get just off, well, you've switched your messages off on, on, your, your, on your story now, aren't you? But you will know yourself, the amount of messages that you can get just off one post. Like, you think, I think to myself, as long as I change one person's day, this post is worth yeah, it. Yeah, I say me. people, 99 people can name a dickhead and if it from people, one know, person, it, change, it, yeah. it makes them happy then. Yeah. And that, that's the intention behind the messages. Yeah. And it's 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 powerful. Well, I'm going to have to cut it because yeah. otherwise we'll be, we'll be getting, we'll be getting uh, squatters right. Yeah. Um, three things I always end with is success. What's, the number one morning motivator in the world today is definition of success. Success is for me, um, being able to wake up every single day and make that little difference in my daughter's life, in my life and people's lives around me. I find myself, I believe that I am already successful in my own right. Not just because of what I've been through, but because I am getting that little bit better every day i don't amount it to money and you know you can put it on these things but i aim my successes right I'm making progress i'm making progress every single day and i feel like i am sometimes i feel like i'm going a little bit backwards but you know i i, I i'm still we don't take it in days do we it's in if you look where you were six months ago where you were 12 months ago fucking hell, mate, where you were 10 years ago exactly where you're going to be in 12 months, two years. I'm a walking success story mm. in its own yeah, right, yeah. really. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, especially when you've been there, waking up and not having to turn into the wall is great. Yeah, or have your feet hanging over your mouth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Happiness. Um, That's the first thing that comes to mind. Happiness. My kids. My kids. Family. Like, that's, for me, that's like, that's, 
that's everything. Yeah, that's everything. But also, I, I've I've actually found happiness through this journey within myself, and um, and forgiving myself for a lot of things. Because if I'm not happy, how can I make you happy? But happiness isn't something that just happens. Happiness is it's a it's a job, it. mate. Mm -hmm. You got to work on it every gotta day. Maintain it. You, mm -hmm. And this is where the morning thing comes in because you got to work on meditating clearing the mind of all this bollocks that you've got but and then you've got a chance then to be happy but people think it's mad you're doing all these things you're getting up at this time but basically all you're doing is working to be happy yes that's, that's it, it. In there, you there, there you go there you go i'm doing it's... all these things oh you're fucking mad getting in cold water it yeah. makes me happy yeah so it's not mad because if if, yeah. if if doing that makes me happy if putting myself through that discomfort for three minutes in the morning yeah makes me a happier person for the rest of the day yeah then i'm going to do it cold showers when you step into a cold shower, you don't think about anything other than how cold that shower was. Mm -hmm. You can be going through trauma. You can be going through the worst time of your life. When you step in that cold shower, you about all anything. you think about is how cold that shower is. And if you can control your breath within the that moment of chaos, you will find peace. Yeah. And that's what gets addictive with the cold shower. For me, everyone's got their own ethos on it. But I say to people, whatever you got going on, when you step in there, it's done. It's you forget about it. All right, it might come back a couple of hours <clears throat> later, but you're tingling. And then before, you, you know, and that if, even if for that split, if you do a minute, 30 seconds, whatever, it takes you away from whatever you're going through. Mm. It helps you reset, can't it? Yeah. Message then, last thing. What's your message for everyone watching then before we... My message for everyone watching is, especially after today, just speak your truth. Be who you are really meant to be. Stop looking at other people, concentrating on other people and, you know, wanting the things that they want and, and just have a good look at yourself. Yeah. Reset and be who you really want to be. People are going to have opinions no matter what. They don't pay your bills and they don't put your kids to sleep at night. So be yourself. Speak your truth and be yourself. And I, I I honestly think if you do that, you can't go wrong. That's working for you. <sighs> Number one, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> but, mate, I fucking love you. And I love you too. I'm very, very grateful to obviously have you as a friend, a business partner, and to have you on the podcast to share, obviously, the other side of the, the number one Mr. Morning motivator. Yeah in the world today and I'm yeah. sure there's plenty of people who'll watch this who'll appreciate Evan what you're doing and why you're doing it yeah you're a special guy thank you let's go champ let's go champ come on <laughs> thank you